Hey, this is Commander Bacon with His Way Homestead, and we're out in the wood chop. It is hot out here today. It is 95 degrees, according to the thermometer on the wall. Let's, let's go over and take a look at it. Let's see. There you go. Creeping up to 100. So we're out in the wood shop, so you know we got to be making something. So stay tuned and find out all about it. Okay, so uh, as most of you know, we've caught a swarm of honeybees, and now it's time to make a permanent home for them instead of just that swarm trap box. Uh, that's not a permanent home. So today we're going to be building a long Langstroth horizontal hive. So um, I'm going to go get all the lumber, stage it right here, there, and we'll start cutting pieces. Okay, so you see those long bores, they're two by 12s by 12 foot long. And they're pretty heavy on a hot day in the building. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cut those bad boys up to a more manageable length. And uh, we'll actually be building two of these horizontal hives because I've got all the material to do it. Might as well knock, knock them both out at the same time when you have all the, uh, all the tools set up. Just knock them out. Okay, so that's a little bit better of an angle for the camera. Sorry about all the miscues and everything, but you know what? It's really hot. So I'm still pulling out staples from this lumber. Glad I didn't hit it with the, with the saw. You can see there's a kind, of, kind of a nasty little place right there. I think I still need to adjust the camera a little bit. I'll get it worked out. Okay, so here's the two end pieces. Now we have to cut the, uh, the front and the rear to size and uh, should be good to go. And then we can go on to the next step. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the pieces to the right length and then we'll go to the next step. So, so the two end pieces, these two end pieces are 19 and 9 16 so now we're gonna cut the front and the rear pieces and they're 47 and 7 eighths inches long. All right, so there's the first two or the first the front and the back and the sides for the first hive. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other, not gonna record it. You've seen it once, why do you need to see it again? Just know that I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a good job. Okay, so the little rabbit cut on the bottom, the little rabbit joint, that's where we're gonna install the number eight uh, wire, hardware cloth. And that's gonna be where the small beetles will fall down through into the oil pans. So it'll keep the hive healthy. Okay, now I'm gonna readjust the fence and make the second cut. And we're gonna keep that little piece of wood that we're gonna cut out of that. And we're gonna use that to uh, tighten and fasten the uh, wire mesh to the bottom of the hive box. Okay. 
Okay, so that operation was to put this little rabbit in there. It's a 9 16 by 9 16 rabbit. And this will this will be where the this will be the bottom, right? So that's where the wire the uh, number eight hardware cloth will be inserted and it'll he help catch and uh, keep uh, small hive beetles away from the hive. So it's a good thing. So now we're gonna set up the table saw to cut a rabbit on the top of the front and rear boards. And that'll be a three quarter inch tall, deep, whatever you wanna say, by three eighths wide rabbit. There's my little cheat sheet. So first we're gonna cut this ledge right here. This, it's three eighths deep. I just set the blade for three eighths and it'll be three quarter inch away from the end of the face. Of, of the board and then we'll turn the board on its edge and cut this one and I'll do it the right way this time instead of having the the, um, the waste material on, between the blade and the fence you don't want to do that because it'll shoot that piece out of there like a rocket so what we're going to do is this will be up against can you see it this will be up against the fence and the blade will be here and the waste will fall out that way and that way we won't have any uh, projectiles that could injure us or hurt us. So I, I, got, I got it set up, but I'm gonna go ahead and run a test piece and then we'll go ahead and uh, start putting those rabbit joints in, in the big boards, the big heavy boards. Man, they're heavy and it is hot in here. Okay, so we've got that, the uh, rabbit joints at both ends done on the long boards. You can see that's a three eighths by three quarter rabbit. And on the bottom is a nine sixteenth by nine sixteenth rabbit. And since the battery on my phone is about dead, I think that's all I'm gonna be able to record right now. So stay tuned, I'll be back. We'll finish this up. All right, so we're back out in the sweatshop gonna try this we got to make a, another rabbit cut in the end of these big long boards for the the hive and uh, a little bit sketchy what I'm gonna do but we'll give it a shot go slow and try to keep all our fingers all in one piece so we'll see what happens All right, so that was kind of sketchy having a long board up on end like that, but I used my push block. I made sure that my fingers were out of the way. And what other, what else made it scary was the blade was up so high, right? So um, none of these projects are worth getting your fingers cut off. Make sure you're safe about it. So if that first one got any sketchiness to it at all, I'd have stopped and done it a different way. But the first one went pretty well, and all the others after that went pretty well. So I was like, okay, let's roll with it. So the next thing we gotta do, so we got all the, uh, the big two by 12s cut with all the edges cut, all the joints cut and everything. Now we're gonna assemble the main box. All right, so I got these clamps a couple weeks back thinking that these would be good to hold the corners together. So we're gonna try these and see what happens. Um, used them a little bit and I'm not real hopeful that it'll provide the outcome I desire. All right, so it looks like the clamps are gonna work. It's gonna hold it together good for me. 
Um, I just have to get the glue on the edges and we're gonna drill pilot holes with countersunk heads and we're gonna glue it and screw it. And it's still hot in here. For all you Leonard Skinner fans, I'm hotter than a fox in a forest fire. All right, so I'm gonna put you in fast forward. Oop, sorry, didn't mean to, <laughs> earthquake, whoa. Uh, gonna put you in fast forward and uh, we'll get through this process pretty quick. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Let's take a look at what we got here. We got a big box. We got the box with the lip for the uh, frames to sit in. And it's almost, almost too wide. All right, so it's another day, still hot. That's okay, it's not as hot as what it was. Uh, we're gonna cut the legs, gonna do some easy stuff. Cause here's, here's the problem that I had. Once I cut the, once I'm, I built the box, the main box, I uh, discovered that the two by 12 is a little bowed out in the middle. So what I've done since it's been so hot in here, went ahead and put a pipe clamp on it, squeezed that in, over squeezed it, and it's, it's pretty close. It's within like a 16th of an inch now of where it needs to be. So. I don't want to mess with that a whole lot more. I'm just gonna let it still sit there with the clamps and see what happens. But in the meantime, I'm gonna start making some other parts. So I'm gonna do the legs. The legs are 30 and a half inches tall with a 45 degree miter cut at the top. So we're gonna make those. All right, so I realize you don't get to see a whole lot. There's not a whole lot to see. I'm just cutting two by fours, 30 and a half inches long with a 45 degree angle on the end. So let me grab one, I'll show it to you. That's it, not rocket science. So we'll get to another part here right now. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is cut the frame boards for the um, small hive beetle oil traps. And um, what it does, it utilizes these trays, right? So you, you fill these trays up with oil, it, get, it fits on the bottom of the hive. The hive has that number eight um, wire mesh on the bottom of it which is too small for bees to get through, but plenty big enough for small hive beetles to try to escape the bees. And they get down in the oil, they get stuck. It's like La Brea tar pits. They die, it's great. You don't, you don't want those things to be alive in your hive. Don't want it alive in your hive. So anyway, so we're gonna cut, there's three boards that uh, form a U shape. And then there's gonna be a piece of plywood to have the bottom of that and all that's going to get attached to the bottom of the hive box that we already built so that's what we're going to do now all right so now comes the challenging part uh these these pieces of two before have to be milled down to uh, 15 16 wide by two inches tall. Not a typical two by four dimension. And because of that, it's gonna be a lot of waste. 
which I don't like waste. But we'll get it figured out. We'll get it working. I mean, it's just two by four. It's not that big a deal. It's not like a piece of mahogany or anything like that, where you definitely don't want to waste it. So we're going to be milling that down and put you in fast forward. We'll get it done. Okay, so now we got them to inch and a half by two inches, but I need 15 sixteenths. How are we gonna do that? Well, I could rip it down on the table saw. I don't like doing that. I've got a 15 inch planer over here. I'm gonna mill it down to the proper thickness using that. Much easier. That's the way to do it. See, that didn't take long and I uh, didn't have to worry about the blade being really high on the table saw and get all my fingers. So uh, next we got to cut a half inch by half inch rabbit in the edge of all those boards that we just milled down. So we'll do that right now. So now on the, on the long piece, since we got Nice little rabbit. Not cute and fuzzy bunny rabbit, but it's, it's a rabbit joint, okay? Uh, so what we're gonna do is, is cut a rabbit in the end here so that this piece will fit in there. And we'll take it to the same depth as the other cut. All right. Okay, so here's what that looks like, okay? And what we'll end up it with is a joint like this. <laughs> Let me get it better, okay? It's a nice joint, okay? Uh, so we're gonna assemble this, and this groove is actually for the plywood bottom that those uh, oil trays will sit on. So. Let me reposition the camera and we'll put these things together. All right, so we're not gonna go fast motion on this one because this won't take long at all. We're just gonna put some glue on that face and on this face right here. Put them together. Put them square as I possibly can. And we're gonna zap some staples in it. Bada boom. All right. See, look at that. That's quick and easy. Staples are easy. Now I'm gonna do the other end. Easy peasy. Uh, you probably didn't get to see that end, did you? <laughs> Sorry about that. But it looks the same as the other end. See there? Look. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, but this is what the bottom frame looks like. This will get attached to the bottom of the, the hive box, the main body. Uh, we got to cut a piece of plywood to fit in the, the rabbit joint. And then this part be almost complete so um, next part cut the plywood okay so we're gonna measure the frame here's my lovely assistant hey honey uh, she came out here to help me because 
I need help with plywood. So anyway, uh, we're gonna measure the frame and figure out the size of the plywood that we need to cut and then we're gonna cut it. Okay, so we're building two hives, so we're gonna go ahead and cut two bottoms while we're at it. So uh, stay tuned while we rip this plywood. <laughs> Easy peasy. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put this uh, number eight uh, wire onto the bottom of our main hive box. So uh, put you in fast forward mode and we'll see how this goes. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. So you temporarily, whew, gotta wipe, whew, wipe the sweat off of me. It's hot. Uh, so you have to temporarily uh, staple the wire to the sides, and then you drive in those um, pieces that we cut out of the rabbit joint. You cut, you you beat those into the wire, and it gets it really, really tight. And then you staple that with the staple gun with long staples into the frame so now all i have to do is just trim this uh excess wire off i'm not going to bore you with that i'm going to go ahead and take care of it pretty quick use a little uh angle grinder we'll knock it out piece of cake and then we can start putting on the um the the oil the small hive beetle oil trap tray uh assembly <laughs> all right so um that was pretty easy to trim it with the grinder i should have showed you uh, maybe when I build the next one, I'll, I'll do that. But look at this. Man, it, it's nice and tight. Feels good. Feels good. I think we did a good job. Okay, so it's another day, and we're still working on the hive box. And what we're going to do now is put in the um, entrances for the bees. So uh, they're spaced out. They're six inches wide. There's three of them. Uh, and they're half inch six inches long, half inch wide, and they're, and they're evenly spaced out on the whole box. So I'm gonna lay these out and uh, put you in fast forward mode and see how this goes. Okay, so here's here's what we got going on here. We've got uh, I got the board, got the board cut. See, it's got an angle on it, 45 degrees, and that's going to sit above this little door, and hopefully, it'll shed water. All right? We're not going to glue it. We're just going to screw it in, uh, just in case anything happens to it. We need to remove it and replace it. So that's what I'm gonna do.
Okay, so there you go. We got the uh, we got this little drip edge thing installed, and we even put these fancy fancy latches. So then you can open that up and access the oil pans. That wasn't too bad. Not bad at all. All right. I think that's that's all we're gonna do tonight. All right, so today we're gonna work on uh, finishing out the top of the box and also putting on the roof. So the roof is hinged and there's some trim work that we have to put around the top in order to accommodate that roof. So um, first part is Here's, here's a little piece of trim board. I'm gonna glue it and staple it. And we'll see how that goes. So, let's go open up the glue bottle. It helps to pull the old glue out of the glue bottle. <laughs> and did I mention that it's hot in here? Does anybody has an old furnace blower that works or knows the HVAC guy that wants to support a YouTube channel man I'd really appreciate it because it is toasting we're gonna put this flush with the top of here and hopefully I won't let it slip one by four to the correct length of the width of this and then I ripped it down to inch and five eighths so now I have to cut a long piece that accommodates that matter of fact I might go ahead and put this other piece on the other end first since I already have it and this hive is getting really heavy All right, so we'll get more of our mystery glue here. Ultimate tight bond, tight bond three. It's a good uh, water resistant, it's outdoor, it's paintable. Good stuff. Probably about, there's not too many decent wood glues out there and this is probably one of the best ones. It's just hard to find really good stuff. And the tight bond's good, good, good product. Basically, it's going to sit down on top of that. It's going to hinge up that way. So I have to cut two more pieces like this, cut that, and uh, and then what I'll have to do is take a piece of one by four, and I'll have to match this angle and take it across here, and that'll that'll complete the roof. Uh, other than putting the the sheeting on the top of it, so I'm going to go take care of that and. Uh, then we'll attach the uh, this trim. So now we're going to put this uh, front piece of trim on. Same process. Glue it and screw it. Or glue it and staple it. I'm not screwing it. See my precise gluing application techniques is outstanding. This is going to be tricky. 
get it close. I'll have a little bit of time to move it down here. Just want to make sure that it's all getting warped and flush along the entire way. All right. So this is the back. He tells the back because here's the uh, here's the door for the oil pan. We'll spin this around if I don't trip and trip myself and fall over everything that I've got going on. Smearing it around my fingers, I can just smear it onto the wood, and that distributes the glue better. And we'll make sure this is where it needs to be. So that's the trim, and what will happen is there will be another, another board going across here, and that's where my hinges will get mounted, and that's where the top will pivot. Okay? The hinge for the top is on the front, so that way every time when you work on the beehive, when you examine the frames or anything, you approach from the rear, and it doesn't disturb the bees going in and out of the opening. So that's the plan. Happier bees means less aggressiveness toward the beekeeper, which is a good thing. Okay, so I got these pieces cut for the top, and now I am going to uh, cut the, the fronts. Let's see that angle? That's going to match the angle of the, um, of the roof. Let's see if I can do this right. That's about the right one. It's this one. Hold on. Hard to do with one hand. But uh, see there? So all I'm gonna do is, is put a bevel cut on the front and the rear, and then we're gonna start to assemble this part of the roof. Um, there's some other cleats I have to put inside there in order to hold the cover boards. So I'm going to build the roof frame, put those cleats in for the cover boards, and then I'm gonna put the decking on the roof. But I'll probably go ahead and put the hinges on and everything, have it all together, have it ready. Uh, that way I know when I close the roof, when I close it down, hinge it down, I'm not gonna be binding or pinching on those cleats that hold the cover boards that are over top of the frames. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I'll explain it once I get it together. Here's a little helpful hint with woodworking. Um, there's no way I was gonna cut both of those angles perfectly with a circular saw. So what I did, if you look there, there's an X. So I cut one, I cut the first one, marked the right side with an X, and then I used that to cut all the others, and I marked that same side with an X so that when I put them together, all the X's will be to one side and it's 
and it's going to match up better. Even if I don't have it perfect, if I don't have it perfectly symmetrical, it'll match up better because of that. So just a helpful hint, woodworking to hip, hint, tip, whatever you want to call it. I have trouble talking today. Must be the heat. Okay, so the uh, screws I'm going to use to put together the top has a torch or star driver with it. The fast disconnect, uh, whatever you want to call it, quick change drill bit with the screwdriver, that's got a Phillips. So it's got a little Allen set screw. I'm going to show you something most people don't realize. In the bottom of this, there's a hex driver. So all you do is take that, stick it in there, give it a twist, back it out, pull your driver bit out, toss it aside, file it for later, put your new bit in, and tighten it back up. You're good to go. Bet you didn't know that little thing was even on there. I didn't. So I found it out. I just wanted to share it with you. Another tip for free. Okay, so you can see that I've got the frame structure for the gable roof and it's hinged, but it has no structure this way, but nothing holding it together. When I get the roof decking on there, that'll make it solid. So after we get that, then all we have to do is um, put some flashing on it, paint this bad boy and we'll get it, get it out there and get the the swarm out of that swarm trap and into this new home for them. So, going to work on the cleats. Got to put the cleats in there so that I can put the deck boards, those cover boards. That's the next thing. All right, so now I've got the, uh, I've got it prepped. I'm ready to put the cleats in inside. That'll hold the uh, cover boards in place. So, I'm going to put you in fast motion and we'll zip right through this. Okay, so I got the cleats all completed for the cover boards. So what are these cover boards I'm talking about? Well, if you, if you know anything about the horizontal hives, uh, you can put these cover boards in there and it'll help with ventilation. And it'll also only allow you to expose the frames that you need to work on. So that keeps the bees more content and comfortable and they don't want to get angry. So let me show you. I just got to balance the balance the top there so here's let me get my glue bottle i just dropped there we go okay so got a couple of frames in here and that cover board will sit in there just like that actually i have to cut it a little bit shorter it's a little too long but but you get the idea then, if I want to work on those two frames, I just lift that one cover board up, pull that frame out, check it out, do whatever I want with it, and then I can put that cover board back in. Well, you weren't seeing any of that. <laughs> so there, you know, you mess with this frame, put it back in, then put the cover board back, and it keeps the bees covered. And there's still plenty of room for them to move around on top of the frame, okay? So that's what it's all about. 
So we're just about done. Um, got to paint the box. I want to paint the box before I screw the legs on because I just want to make sure that there's no raw wood exposed at all. Um, so if we paint underneath the legs and paint the legs before we put them on, then everything's covered and should be protected from any kind of weather. And it should last a lot longer. So the only thing left to do is cut the uh, sheeting for the roof and, and screw that on and then put the flashing on it. So we're getting pretty close. All right, so now I'm gonna cut a hole in each of these gables for ventilation. And then we're gonna put like screen door screen on the inside of it to keep uh, any bad guys out of it and keep bees from going in there and doing their thing inside of there. So uh, that's the next thing. I'm not gonna bore you with it. It's pretty simple stuff. All right, so I got all the ventilation holes in the gables. Uh, next thing, I think I said this before, is to cut the decking for the roof and then we'll put the, um, put the, put the uh, flashing on it. So we'll see if I get, get that done. Uh, we also have to cut more of those cover boards. Uh, we got to paint it, prime it, paint it. We got to put the legs on it. And we're getting really close. I think I've said that before too, but we're closer than what we've ever been. Over here in the paint booth, also known as the other section of the building, the legs are getting a nice set of primer put on. And it's drying really quick since it's so hot, so I'm gonna flip these and paint the back. All right, so here's what we got so far. Here's the hive. We got the roof on it. We still got to put the um, flashing on the roof. I need to trim up this door a little bit. It, it wants to stick just a little bit. I just as soon as it not stick. So I might have to end up taking it off the hinges and, and uh, trimming a little off of that. But we got this all done it's got a, a chain to hold it open and we've got the um, cover boards in place so that's looking good so the next things we have to do this one's a little warped we'll put it down put it up is um got to build a divider board we got to build a divider board and put that in there. Got to put the flashing on it. We got to put screen in the holes. Uh, got to drill some holes in some of the um, cover boards, uh, big enough to put the feeder on it, and also for ventilation too. And uh, man, we're getting really close. As usual, we're still getting really close. So anyway, uh, that's what we're going to be working on. Try to wrap this up. Uh, we need to get these bees into this hive as soon as possible. So, but we're getting there. And I think one thing we're going to do too, the legs, because they're going to be sitting on the ground. Uh, we have some flex seal uh, spray paint. We might uh, flex seal like the bottom six inches of that. And that'll help keep any moisture from getting into the legs. So we'll, we'll give it a shot. Okay, so I haven't shown a whole lot of the last few steps with this beehive, uh, mostly because I was in a hurry to get it done. So we put the flashing on the roof, and that was that was a chore. That was not fun. I've got the screens over the vents. We open it up. Got all the cover boards. But what I need to do now still is make the divider board uh, so that we don't have them having all this space inside this hive and when they don't really need it. So I gotta work that out and we'll be able to transfer these bees maybe, maybe tonight, tomorrow. I don't know, we'll see. So here we go, we got the bees moved into the the horizontal hive, the long Langstroth hive. And we did install a, uh, a landing board there. 
and they seem to be pretty happy with it. So uh, they're going in and out, they're taking lots of pollen in, uh, everything seems to be pretty good. And like I said, um, I'll have plans available. I uh, appreciate any kind of uh, donation to uh, paypal.me at His Way Homestead. Uh, shoot me an email at His Way Homestead for you at gmail.com, the number four. And we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and, and we'll get those plans out to you if you're interested in it. So um, it's been a project. I got another one to build. Uh, so we can catch another swarm and have another colony set up. Um, we're pretty excited about these. So until next time, don't forget, his way is the best way. We'll see you later.